as I am concerned, there is no such thing as theatrical belly dance. There is evocative dance, there is conceptual dance, there is performance dance that combines concept and expressivity and evocativeness. When we talk about theatrical belly dance, we mean dance that has a concept and that tells a story. Uh, these elements, if you're a good dancer, you're delivering these elements, whether you're performing on a huge stage or in a little nightclub on a dance floor. Uh, now let me tell you why I think theatrical belly dance, as we, what we mean by theatrical belly dance, um, I feel it doesn't have um, a huge potential for wider audiences. Um, Dance is nonverbal, so it's harder to tell a story. And dance is not pantomime. Pantomime is a completely different genre with its own rules and its own skills and its own ups and downs and its own levels. There are two problems in infusing dance with pantomime. First is uh, what we normally see in performances is that dancer stops basically dancing and uh, starts acting, starts doing uh, pantomime for you know a certain number of whatever, certain duration of the music. However, um, it's not in my experience, I haven't seen dancers who are the star level in belly dance and also the star level in pantomime and the star level in acting. What you normally see is the star level of belly dance uh, beautifully goes and then it stops and then you get some mediocre pantomime and mediocre uh, one -oh, level 101 acting. Um, this lets me down as an audience. This is not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing beautiful dance. I'm, seeing, I'm interested in seeing every step of the story being danced. If you tell me a story where every move, every, every turn of the story, every step is a dance move, I will enjoy it tremendously. But it, as I said, it doesn't have to be a theater stage. However, when I'm told, come and see me at a theatrical showcase, and I come over there, I end up being let down as an audience because 50% of what I see is um, mediocre pantomime and mediocre acting. The second problem with introducing pantomime in dance is that dance is more open to interpretation because it's of its nonverbal quality than other um, than other performing arts forms. And, uh, and because of this subtleness with which it tells a story, it really tells a story through concept and evocativeness and the body language. If you take pantomime and make your story so much more graphic that if you're portraying something like, you know, a lion mauling a zebra and you rub it in, this is what exactly I see in front of me, it's an interesting concept, but it takes the mystery. It takes my right to interpret it to interpret this dance. Again, it lets me down as an audience because it takes away something that was, I was really looking forward to. I was looking forward to this uh, nebulous mystery of dance where you interpret the body language the way you interpret the body language in uh, uh, a regular conversation. So uh, these are the reasons why I'm not a big fan of theatrical ballet dance. I'm just a fan of dance, evocative dance, expressive, conceptual dance, storytelling dance. Theatrical belly dance, my maybe loose definition, is a public performance taking place outside of a commercial setting. So it's not a restaurant show, it's not a hookah lounge show, it's not a wedding or a sweet 16 party. It is outside of that realm and also maybe a little bit outside the realm of a very classical performance, you know, in a classical manner with live music, outside of the classical model as well. To have a good theatrical belly dance performance, I think, as with any performance, it starts with your audience. The minute you take this dance outside your living room, you have to consider your audience. But the beauty of theatrical belly dance is you are now liberated from that very, very narrow commercial script of being the pleasing dancing girl whose job it is to make you know, your clients happy. You can write your own script. You get to express your own voice. Um, an analogy I like to use is that it's as if you're an oil painter and you have been invited to hang a work as part of a prestigious gallery show. So as an artist, now you're going to think, oh, what masterpiece do I want to present to this audience? 
What story do I want to tell them? What emotion do I want to convey? What topic do I want to explore? And in addition to these, these artistic ideas about the actual work you're going to put on display, as a working artist, and hopefully you're developing a body of work, what do you want the people that see your work to understand about you as an artist? What are your strengths? What are your specialties? What do you want them to know about your process? It's a lot of thought, a lot of self-analysis, some, some meditating, some analyzing, and I kind of sum it up as intent. Really good theatrical belly dance, in my opinion, is going to start with well thought out, clearly defined artistic intent. Once you have determined your intent, the next step is how you're going to convey this to the audience, and that, in my mind, is content. The, the method by which you get your ideas across. So normally, for a dancer, this is going to start with the music. Is your musical choice going to send your idea to the audience? I mean, you might feel wistful sadness when you hear a particular song, but will it read to the audience as well? And then sometimes technical considerations as well. Is the, is the piece danceable? Just because it's a beautiful, emotional piece of music, it really might not be all that um, well designed for dancing with. Once you have your song, your music, now we go to choreography. And that, that dreaded word to me, choreography, but the reality is, for the most part, theatrical belly dance is not the place for improv. Once you've removed live music from improvisational dance, I think you've taken away a lot of the, the inherent drama in the idea of doing improvisation. And no matter how great you are as an improvisational dancer, you are never delivering your most your most defined performances because you're reacting to the music and to the crowd. When you choreograph it, you are going to totally own that music. You're going to make those highs really high, the lows really low. You put in witty little uh, choreographic combinations that you come up with. You showcase your strengths because you build the whole piece around that. So I think a, a well thought out choreography, very important and good solid technique. Um, this audience that's coming to the show these are your peers and your colleagues, maybe. They know as much about the dance as you do. And your teachers and your mentors, who might know a great deal more about the dance. Even the general audience that tends to come to a theatrical belly dance show tends to be a more sophisticated, knowledgeable audience. Just you know, shaking some fringe and having a charming smile is not going to get you over with this audience. They are expecting to see polished content, good technique, and, and, and a high professional standard, and artistic diversity and authenticity and individuality as well. Once you have your choreography, you know, then we get to things like costuming, makeup, props. Again, does all of this convey the idea that you want to convey? Does it all go towards your ultimate story, towards the, the impression that you want to make on this audience? I mean, you maybe want to make them happy, maybe you want to shock them, maybe you want to uh, leave them laughing. Um, or make them feel outrage, whatever it is, all these pieces need to work towards that final end. And technical considerations, in particular with costuming and makeup, if you truly are on a theatrical stage, the distance from the audience, the lighting, this is going to wipe out a lot of commercial costumes that you might wear in a, in a typical restaurant where the audience is like six inches off your hip and they can see all that intricate beadwork. On theater stage, it's just going to wash out to its predominant color. So this is another aspect you want to consider. It's a lot of things to consider, a whole lot of, of, of elements that are going to go into this. But to me, to, again, to sum it up, well thought out, carefully defined artistic intention. And you're going to marry that to very well thought out, carefully polished artistic 